Hello everyone. So my text-based games were not a big success. All the tutorials for them. I'm kind of at a place where I don't completely know where to go from the, with them because the way I set it up and I don't really want to start it over again. Though if people really want me to then I guess I will. But the truth of it is I don't know what to do from where I got it. I should have planned it out a lot more than I did, and at the point it's at, it's kind of in a hole. So instead of working on that, I wanted to start uploading more content, and I've decided that I am going to make a tutorial on how to make Tetris in Java instead. Now Tetris is a pretty simple game, it's not too in-depth, so it shouldn't take me very long to get the basics of it done. and I think it should be a fun project to do. I've done it before, but the actual project did not turn out very well. So I'm hoping this one is going to be a lot better. And if I'm ever going too fast for the with the coding, I'm just going to go through it and type as I think it up and explain it as I type it. If you ever need me to explain something over again because you didn't understand it, leave a comment, send me a private message and I'll either respond in there or if I need to I can address it in the next video. So to start off of course we create our new Java project and the beginning of this is going to be pretty simple of course nothing new and we create a new class Tetris main and inside of there we have public static void main string args and we're going to make tetris main extend canvas imp and implement runnable and key listener which should be all we really need for this and control shift o will import those and then we need to add public void run for the runnable public void key pressed key event e for key listener and then key typed and key release uh, yeah key released which none of this should be anything new if you watched my other tutorials that is if you didn't this is basically um, I'll explain this when we get to it, and these are called when keys are pressed on the keyboard. So key pressed is whenever a key is pressed down. Key typed is like when you press a key, and then every time a new character is appearing, as you see there, then the key is considered to be typed, I think. Either that, or it's one press and one release of the key and then key pressed and key released are self-explanatory and now we'll create a JFrame and we'll name it Tetris import it and we're going to make the dimensions of it four hundred by five forty to start with probably going to change that later but we'll just leave it at that for now frame dot set default close operation j frame dot exit on close which means the program will close when you hit the x frame dot set location relative to null to put it in the middle of the screen frame dot set resizable false so that the user cannot resize it and then we're going to make a tetris main tm and we're going to add that to the frame 
and then we're going to set the frame visible. And if this works, we should have a frame pop up. So yeah, here's our, this is going to be our Tetris game. And right now this video, I don't know, I'll see you about stopping this. Probably when I get So we're going to use a rendering system similar to what I did for the text-based game, but just in case you watch that, the first thing we're going actually no we need to make a start method first public void start and after we set the frame to visible we're going to do tm dot start and then inside of here we're going to make a new thread or yeah and pass in this and what allows us to do this is because it implements runnable which means it can be part of a thread and then we're going to give it a high priority, red dot maximum priority, or max priority, and t dot start. And then when t dot start is called, it calls the run method of whatever you passed into the thread. So inside of here, we're going to create a running, and then while the program is running, we are going to update public void update and we're going to have a rendering thing so the rendering thing is going to be pretty much the same thing as it was for the text based game once again but I'm going to go over how to set it up so buffer strategy buff equals new buffer strategy uh, equals get buffer strategy import buffer strategy and then if buff is null create buffer strategy will give it a 3 which is how many buffers there are before it renders and this is to make it not have jumpy rendering so like the screen won't flash or anything and then we're going to continue okay and now graphics 2d which we'll actually use to draw on the screen g equals graphics 2D, we're going to have to cast it because the normal one is just graphics. Buff dot get draw graphics. Import graphics 2D. Render G and make that method. Look void render graphics 2D G. And then buff dot show and then inside of here we can do dg dot set color color dot black and import color and actually let's change this 400 and 550 or 540 to variables that we can access from anywhere so public static Final int width equals 400, height equals 540. And we'll just put those there instead. So width, height, and then we will do g dot fill rectangle 0, 0, width. and height and let's see if this works if this works the background should be black and it is and now let's just write tetris in the middle and that will be the end of this one 
So g dot set color color dot white, and then for positioning this, instead of getting all fancy using font metrics and all that, which I'll do later because I want the positioning to be pretty much perfect. But for now, we'll just run it in debug mode, which updates the code as you type it. And then from there, we can do g dot draw string Tetris. And let's start off at 250 and see what that looks like. Actually, let's make the font bigger. Sure, why not? G set font new font and this is basically your normal keyboarding font so put whatever you want the font to be in here I'm gonna do Calibri because I just like how it looks and then next is I believe the size if not we'll find out soon enough so let's make it 20 and then attributes so let's just do font.plane save that and there's just a white dot which means I have things reversed so that instead go here and instead of plain you can have like bold and italic and that's pretty much it all this other stuff is for other parts of font just do plain for now and funny and now you can see that there let's move it over to 150 180 70. And that's pretty centered. So that will be the end of this tutorial. And I do pretty much know what I'm doing it with this game. I have a whole system set up for this already that I'll just have to make some modifications to. And I'm hoping it turns out pretty well. If you like this video, like it. Even a favorite would be helpful. And if you want to see more of this, subscribe to my channel. Leave me a positive comment to know that you do actually want to see more of these videos. Thank you for watching.